Hello, welcome to this lesson on a Christmas carol, focusing today on drawing together some of the aspects of the text. As ever, we're starting with a retrieval quiz, so follow the link in the middle of the page. Copy and paste the link if you're on a PDF. If you're on YouTube, of course, just follow the link in the description box below this slide. Right, quick overview of today's session then. So obviously we have actually finished reading through the text now. So now our focus is on drawing things together as much as we can. So the challenge is to explore the narrative characters and themes in the novel as a whole, and as far as to evaluate Dickens' authorial choices and his use of methods in the novel as a whole. So the explorer is very much about the, the, the storyline, the characters, the ideas, and the aspire is very much about the analysis of what Dickens is doing, how, and the effect it has. So we're starting with a 30 second quotation blast. So a series of quotations, and as ever, you need to try and do those things from the purple box prompts on the right hand side. Give yourself 30 seconds, try and work out what's missing, who says it, where's it from, uh, what does it show, a feature or a word to zoom in on, and a connection to somewhere else. Now because we have done these before, I'm gonna give you the answers to the missing words, but the other things I'm gonna try and rely on for you guys to do yourselves. As ever, if you want to do this as annotation of the text, you can do. If you want to do to make notes, you can do. Uh, if you've got mind maps, that's absolutely fine as well. Whatever works for you. Right, first quotation, 30 seconds, off you go. Right, oh, here's a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Back from stave one. Right, same task, quotation, prompts, 30 seconds, and off you go. Right, meanwhile the fog and darkness thickened so, the people ran about with flaring links, proffering their services to go before horses and carriages, and get them on their way. Foggy yet, and colder, piercing, searching, biting cold. And again we're back in stave one. Right, another quotation, 30 seconds, go. Right, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips shall be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. And of course, we're back with Scrooge in stage one again. Quotation number four, 30 seconds and go. Right, okay, don't forget this is a, a split quotation, it's actually taken two parts, and we've kind of um, concertina them together. Uh, are there no prisons and the union workhouses? And of course this is again from Scrooge in stage one. And our last quotation from this section, quotation number five, 30 seconds, and off you go. Right, if they'd rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. And of course, we're back with Scrooge in stage one, once again. Now, as I said previously, the focus of today's session is very much about drawing things together. So this is a structure you'll see uh, relatively frequently over the next few lessons. Now, it's a narrative summary. Um, the idea is that we use the format to summarise stave one. The space for five key events, space to explain why those events are important, a box about why um, it's important for Scrooge, as a character, what the, uh, the impact on Scrooge of this stave is, key themes, images, and context points as well, and a space of two useful quotations. Now, if you have this as a handout in front of you, you can, of course, write it in the boxes provided. If not, you can, of course, sketch this out if you wish to as a grid, or simply make bullet point notes section by section as well. That's absolutely fine. Whatever works for you. Should take about five to ten minutes, not a massive task, but hopefully a useful one. Now, we then have a very, very similar task, but this time it's about stage two. So same idea. Uh, we look at key events, why they're important, uh, their impact on Scrooge, key themes, images, context points, and two quotations from the text. And obviously this profile of, of, of this you will find very, very useful moving forwards in terms of making notes for your revision. So do have a good old go at it. Again, five to ten minutes, not a massive task, but worth doing well. Right, we're going to move on from narrative to look at character now. So we have previously looked at profiling Scrooge, but this is your chance to try and draw it all together into one place. As previously, we've got boxes on relationships, key actions, including the staves in which those actions occur, how he changes during the course of the text, four quotation boxes, a box for ambitions, concerns and motivations, 
a negative and positive qualities, or qualities that start and end, it's easier, and a box for linked images, symbols, and things. So you can refer to the previous ones if you have them handy, but do draw these things together. Don't forget, as ever, that pretty much all these things are available in the recipe book, which you can find in the online learning section of the Academy website. Now, something slightly different now. Um, obviously, having completed all our annotation of the text, we're now going to have a, a, a le every lesson, a, a question we're going to try and work through, and a series of tasks that will guide us to a possible response to that question. Now, for today, our key question is this. Why is Scrooge miserly and misanthropic? It's a good question, obviously very much focused on the beginning of the text and then to phase two as well. Now, first task to lead us to that question is to look at the vocabulary. So let's take those two words from the question, miserly and misanthropic. A good idea when you're in exams or any kind of assessed uh, piece of work is to take those key words from the question and instantly think about what do you associate with them, what links will you make with them. So here's your chance to do exactly that. With miserly, for example, if we look at things like synonyms, antonyms, semantic fields, and linked ideas, I was looking at words like money, for example, as an obvious one, selfish, unsympathetic. And also the idea of the individual versus society. A miser is someone who puts their own desire for wealth, for control of money, for control of possessions, um, above the benefits potentially to society. Misanthropic, same kind of idea. Um, being antisocial, impersonal, cold, unemotional, um, selfish, self-centered, self-interested. Um, and again, the idea of the individual versus society links to that as well. So, try and add some more. As ever, don't forget that you've got whole sections on this in the recipe book. If you need to refer to that, uh, please do. Right, what we're now going to try and look at is the influence that some of Scrooge's um, friends, family, compatriots, people, his, his, you know, work colleagues and so on, have had on his life um, and, you know, in terms of his childhood as well. So you have here five key characters that we come across in stage two, or that we hear about in stage two. Scrooge's father, of course, we hear about, we don't see. Scrooge's schoolmaster, Fan, Fezziwig, and Bell. So the idea is for each one, you pin down, what are their actions? What are the things they have done? And what influence does that have on Scrooge as a character, developmentally, personally, socially, you know, and all those other things? There is an extension at the bottom, which is impossible. Try and add quotations and links to images themes and context. So essentially the more detail you can give, the better. For example, if we look to Scrooge's father as the first one on the list. Key action. Well, he abandoned Scrooge, of course, at boarding school. Not necessarily a cruelty. It was a common thing at the time. But what he does do is actually he leaves them there during school holidays, even when it, it appears it would be possible to take him home, as we, as we learn from, from fan collectively. His influence, really, is to give Scrooge uh, a lifelong wariness of other people, a fear of other people, um, and a desire to be sort of something enclosed. He also leads to Scrooge's loss of the innocence and imaginative capacity of childhood, um, and that's a key thing as well. Key quotations, of course, I go for fans. Father is so much nicer now is quite an interesting one, I think, to link to that. Um, in terms of context as well, the idea of um, Dickens' own father being an ineffective parent, I think, is a key contextual factor which links to the depiction of Scrooge's father. So try and do that for all five of those characters. You can lay it out however works for you. You can, of course, write them here if you have it in front of you. Uh, draw grids in your exercise books, your notebooks, if you'd rather, or bullet points are fine as well. Whatever you do, make sure there's a very, very clear title on your work so that coming back to it, you know exactly what it was. Now, this shouldn't take more than, again, about five, ten minutes, roughly, to try and work through. Right, and that brings us back to our big question. So, why is Scrooge miserly and misanthropic? Now, Try and give yourself a chance to reflect on that and then summarise as much as possible your response. You can, of course, write a longer response using paragraphs if you wish to, but even just a few lines to pin down what you think is the causal process that has led to him behaving in that way and being that way, uh, the sort of person we see in stage one. So, with the previous task, of course, we have looked a little bit at the narrative and also the idea of characters as well. What we're now going to try and do very quickly is to try and pick out some key quotations from the text. Uh, so basically the quotations that you think are the most important ones, the most significant ones. So on the screen you've got some that we often use as important ones. It's not a complete list, there's plenty more you could choose. And every teacher and every student more or less will have their favourite go-to quotations, which will vary dramatically. For your own benefit, try and pick out the five that you think are the most important. 
They can be from the screen, they do not have to be. You can add others that you think are important as well. But be prepared to justify why. So do think through, what is it about that quotation that is most useful? Is it widely applicable? Does it represent a key moment or a key revelation, a key cause, a key effect, anything along those lines? And are there words, phrases, techniques you could zoom in on from an analytical perspective? Just about five. And it should take you about five minutes or so just to do that. Make a note of them. And that brings us to our final task of today's session, which is all about the narrative and drawing it together and for conclusions, as it, as it says in the title. A question. So your task is either as a mental exercise, if you want to do it in your head, or on the page as well, if you'd rather, it's not a problem, to run through these questions and decide what you think the answer is to each of them. So, for example, first one, why is the novel divided up into five staves and why five staves? And what are the key events in each stave? Well, some five staves because we need through to the start, past, present, future, through to the end. That's our five staves. It's very, very logically sequenced in that sense. Why five staves? Well, it's the idea of a Christmas carol, all right? It's the idea of um, a text, a piece of art, which is a celebration of Christmas and the values of Christmas. In some way, the Christmas carol does the same thing. So in some way, the piece of music is organised into staves. Here, of course, we have this novel organised into these five staves. Key events in each stave? Well, stave one, of course, we have Scrooge at the start, we have Scrooge and Fred, Scrooge and the Portly Gentleman, we have the visit of Marley's ghost. You know, stave two, of course, we have Scrooge at school, we have Scrooge at school the second time with Fan, we have Scrooge with uh, Fezziwig, we have Scrooge with Belle, we have Scrooge uh, seeing Belle again, end of stave two. Stave three, of course, you know, and so on and so forth. There were several of these, there isn't necessarily a right answer to them, but it's important to have a think about them and try and follow through with them. As ever, you know, yep, in your head is absolutely fine, on the page, fine, but if you're doing it on the page, make sure you label things clearly so you know what it is when you come back to it. And this should take about five, ten minutes, really, of your time. Well, that brings us back to our overview for today's session. Hopefully all of you will feel you've had a chance to explore the narrative characters and themes in the novel as a whole, as a whole. although obviously we focus our efforts particularly on stages one and two. But I feel a lot of you will also be, feel you've been able to move into that kind of spire outcome, which is to evaluate his authorial choices and use of methods in the novel as a whole. And if you have gone down the route of you know, quotations, analysis, that sort of thing, then you have achieved that spire outcome, and well done. Thank you very much for your time today. Quite a lot to get through in today's session, and I will see you in our next session together.